thank you chair for the kind invite uh, warm good afternoon to everyone at the outset i would like to thank the organizing team organizing secretary and scientific chair for the kind invite and i would like to applaud and congratulate them for putting up a fantastic show out here so after the two brilliant talks i have been assigned to speak on management of type 1 diabetes especially those who are poorly controlled um a question to the house how many of you treat type 1 predominantly maybe one or two cases in a month just a number i think many of yeah so i think this would be helpful for all of us so i would like to share certain things like what is the magnitude of the problem like say type 2 diabetes has become a pandemic and india perhaps represents the diabetes care capital of the so india perhaps represents the diabetes care capital of the world so what happens to the number of type 1 diabetes i will show you some interesting data on that identifying the predictors of poor glycemic control so that appropriate strategies could be advised for them then unique challenges that we face uh, in low resource settings like india and certain advices how would like to optimize your therapy so if you look at the global prevalence and the indian scenario this data was published in 2015 by idf in which the projection was the incidence is quite low in india less than 2 per million however because of the sheer number of population india houses the second highest number of individuals with type 1 diabetes so it is almost something similar to type 2 which many of us would not believe that data again got republished in 2022 in lancet in which the numbers has exponentially increased to 8 million individuals of who suffer from type 1 currently and india is harboring majority of them one fourth of all deaths due to diabetes is from south asia that means the glycemic controls remain poor and hence the outcomes are always adverse i will give you a data in terms of a number if a child is di diagnosed to have type 1 at the age of 10 years in india most likely he is going to live for additional 24 years only to talk of ethiopia a poorer nation it is still lower almost a decade and an advanced nation they may reach up to the 60 to 75 years in us uk or australia so that speaks regarding the metabolic health of type 1 so how does our indian patients behave or how they glycemic health of these individuals is currently as of now so this is a pool data from multiple studies across geographies south east west and north in which one denominator is common that glycemic controls remain poor the mean or median a1c remains to the tune of 8.5 to 9% this is the data from three big tertiary care centers in which they have pool data of almost a decade so this perhaps underlines the fact that glycemic controls remain poor and this story is also similar in caucasian population despite the plethora of advances and therapeutics which they have at their disposal what are the factors or predictors of poor glycemic control so we need to identify certain areas which we would like to work upon so that our glycemic uh, metabolic health improves because we have only one drug we have only insulin to titrate but only titrating insulin is not going to give you benefit if you disregard the other pillars of management that is is the key message which is i am going to give in today's talk so which patients are likely to have poorer glycemic control children with longer duration of diabetes patients who have dk even within the first year of diagnosis of type 1 lower maternal education lower socioeconomic strata and the age of diagnosis that means children toddlers less than 2 to 3 years and adolescents at puberty these perform very poorly with regards to glycemic control parental advice and their behavior towards the child is also critical in achieving desired glycemic control the smbg that has to be reinforced that unless you measure your blood glucose targeted strategies can never be devised so the frequency of the smbg has been shown to directly correlate with your glycemic health mother represents the central pillar in management of diabetes numerous studies across western and eastern geographies have reinforced that if the mother is educated and is well into the care of the child the child is going to perform better versus those children in which mothers have low socioeconomic status and less educated 
what are the challenges that we face as physicians caring for type 1 diabetes so these are something unique to india insulin access insulin affordability perhaps india can boast of the fact that insulin prices here are much cheaper in contrast to us and uk where they are much higher availability of some generic insulins have further helped and eased the cost of management of type 1 diabetes sometimes there is no electricity no access to a refrigerator even in a family in which a child is diagnosed so there is significant determinant uh, deterrent in managing such cases illiteracy lack of education lack of access to health care and poor follow up these are critical challenges that we face in managing our cases and there are certain socio cultural ethnic variabilities which preclude the use of insulin as a form of therapy in type 1 diabetes and these children land up with severe dk and even deaths at some times hypertrophy is quite common and this study from cmc velo speaks that around 70% would have some form of clinical hypertrophy and if you use a usg the number is going to 90% they have shown that presence of lipohypertrophy is indirectly correlating with your a1c the more number of lipohypertrophic sites the poorer is the glycemic control so you have to inspect the sites not mere increase the dose of insulin if your patient is not performing well what are the strategies so non pharmacological therapy then we should switch to talk something regarding insulin which regimens are preferred which analogs or regular insulin is preferred what are the data to back that up and what are the common errors in prescription of insulin regimen when your child is not having the desired control the monitoring targets and the glycemic thresholds apart from that we have to prevent two catastrophic complications in the life of type 1 one is severe dk and one is severe hypoglycemia because this could be life threatening ada and the isbad guidelines endorses the a1c to be less than 7.5 if that can be safely achieved in individuals who have less than 18 years and more stringent control would be advocated for type 1 diabetic adults so these are the main pillars of management of diabetes especially type 1 pharmacotherapy being only with insulin but medical nutritional therapy and exercise has also been to be taken into care because each of these components influences the other as well as the outcome of type 1 diabetes management with regards to nutrition you have to counsel them regarding the benefits of carb counting portion use in the meals or at least a visual analog of how they could monitor the carb intake because you compare across east west south or not indian takes carb rich foods if the family takes carb rich food the child is going to going to take the same so counseling them with a comprehensive nutrition plan goes a long way in giving you optimal management of diabetes mellitus this is the this threshold our recommendation is from the icmr they have recently published a guideline many of i would like to, many of you to go through that so carbs should be around 50 to 55 percent fat 25 to 30 percent and protein 15 to 20 percent but the critical distinction between type 2 and type 1 is you may not starve your child because growth and pubertal as development is as critical as managing diabetes so if you restrict the calories there then you are going to land up in growth failure and pubertal delay the principles of management of dietary planning three meals three snacks snacks to prevent hypoglycemia one bedtime snack if your post dinner blood glucose are keeping on the lower side and the history of nocturnal hypoglycemia so that meal plan should be advised and it is not one fit size fits all it has to be individualized based on the cultural preferences which foods are available with the family and the patient's preference coming to insulin because that is the only drug available with everyone to treat type 1 so how to effectively use that tcct and the landmark edict trial have shown you data up to 30 years that intensive glycemic control in the early part of type 1 is going to work wonders for the patient with regards to microvascular endpoints and the follow up edict of 28 duration they have shown that not only microvascular endpoints but all cause mortality CVD, these are also decreased if your glycemic controls remains normal not in the intensive range but normal vis a vis those who have poor control what are the typical requirements of insulin what insulin dose is your child going to require this is just a threshold or just something to start with your child may require much lesser or higher doses than that but this is based on the presumption of the insulin sensitivity in the child and the growth and bmi of the child 
so at puberty and toddlers these are the group which are very difficult to treat because of the heavier time they take the meals in erratic pattern they don't listen to any advice so it become critical both for the healthcare as well as the family member to manage the disease effectively in these two vulnerable age groups insulin doses has to be prescribed based on the age pubertal stage exercise pattern the nutritional support intermittent intercurrent illness then weight so you have to take into account all these factors so that these have to be taken into account as a comprehensive plan for devising or advising a particular insulin regimen because if you this is not taken into account only the glycemic profile is looked into the patient is going to land up in either excessive risk of hypoglycemia or the glycemic profile is look, going to remain heavier this is the consensus guideline regarding which regimen you should follow many patients type 1 continue to take premix insulin twice a day which is non physiologic for them and it should be avoided so this endorsement come from ada and esd that perhaps basal bolus insulin regimen with preferably rapid acting insulin or ultra rapid acting insulin with the support of basal insulin which is going to work good for your patients in the long term if you disregard the costs so what is the current position of premix insulin versus basal bolus so if you conventional insulin premix it is non physiologic for a type 1 it is never going to add to the ppg spikes the patient is going to take when the patient consuming any meal and the increased risk of acute and chronic complications in the long term is going to offset any cost benefit that these drugs are going to give hence all the guideline endorses use of a basal bolus mdi or msi in type 1 diabetes and with the availability of biosimilar insulins basal insulins which can be quickly achieved now something regarding rapid acting versus analogs so there is no differences with them with regards to glycemic controls a1c almost is similar but hypoglycemic endpoints flexibility is much better with rapid acting analogs there are scenarios in which these are quite helpful like it can be immediately given after food ppg spikes could be better controlled it is very valuable in toddlers and children and adolescents who just deny to take whatever you advise like they may not take a meal at time they may take a meal at erratic time they may not take insulin so here ultra fast acting insulins are going to be very very helpful nph has been the cornerstone of therapy for almost 3 to 4 decades even the dcct used nph but now in recent studies with meta analysis they have shown that perhaps basal insulins perform much better the intraday variability is much lesser with basal insulin versus nph and hence they should be preferred over nph and there is data to back that cochrane analysis also summarized that perhaps basal insulin are preferable over twice daily nph in type 1 diabetic children and adolescents in brief note regarding dawn phenomenon and somogy so we all know because in one you have to reduce the insulin dose and in other you have to increase the basal insulin so the hypoglycemia followed by counter regulatory hyperglycemia is what is the classical somogy effect in the dawn phenomenon because of insulin resistance counter regulatory hormone excess you have to enhance the dose of insulin in the previous night and this can only be seen if you are going to your smbg at 3 to 5 am at this critical juncture if you measure the blood glucose then you can perhaps distinguish between these two entities psi are prohibitively costly for majority of in the developing nations because of the out of health care expenditure but these remain the treatment of choice in the current era and with the availability of closed loop pumps these are performing much better with regards to quality of life time in range and a1c versus msis however it remains out of reach for most of us smbg is the cornerstone of diabetes management especially type 1 and type 1 diabetic registry confirms that these are the timings when smbg should ideally be done effectiveness of cgm so cgm is also a lot of help versus smbg in giving you the desired target so this also should be advocated dk should be prevented because dk poor glycemic controls lead to dk and dk in the long terms lead to poor glycemic control hypoglycemia should be avoided and you should optimize your smbg profile snacking pattern to achieve to achieve the desired target so diabetes education remains the cornerstone every patient should have a systematic dsme plan so that 
the glycemic profile is well maintained and the long term outcomes are improved so to conclude poor glycemic controls remains the same story especially across all resource poor settings longer duration of diabetes poor socio economic status poor educational status is the key predictors of poor glycemic outcome you have to identify them insulin titration alone is never going to help even if only going to help if it is coupled with proper education dietary pattern exercise and counseling msi remains the treatment of choice basal bolus insulin should be advocated and this is the treatment of choice never premix insulin even if you take cost into account because in the long run that would be offset if the patient develops any devastating acute or chronic complications and diabetics education perhaps the bedrock of a successful type 1 management strategy plan i thank you all for your patient listening